Hey, what's going on guys? So in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can make your very own template. And the example that I'm going to use is I'm going to make my New Year's resolution tracker for 2025. And I'll show you the exact process that I go through to make this template completely from scratch. So to start, I know that I'm going to have six different categories that I want to create resolutions for. And this is just a note for me to create smart goals, which are specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time bound. This is because according to science or something, if you create goals like this that are measurable and that are time bound where you have a deadline, you're more likely to achieve these goals. So let's get started. First, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift this over to the right because I don't really need it here. And I'm just going to create a title for this. I'm going to call it resolution tracker 2025. And I'm going to bold this and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger by pressing the plus arrow here. And I'm going to change the entire sheet by clicking on this rectangle box up here and clicking the font I want. So I'm going to use Lexen this time. Okay, now that we got the title, now I want to start working on the category. So my first category will be personal growth. So I'm just going to come over here and type in personal growth. So I know that I want to track five different resolutions for each category. And the reason why I'm doing five instead of like 10 or 15 is because usually less is more when you have so many resolutions that you want to track and complete from my own experience i ended up not completing them because there was just too many things to think about so i'm only going to go with five for each category but you can put however many you want and i'm just going to have actually headers up here so i'm going to call this s slash n and i'm going to have the goal here and then i want a deadline because i want to use smart goals and then I'm going to have a checkbox, which tells me if it's completed or not. So I left this little gap because I know that I want to add a little chart here of some sort. Most likely I'll be using a pie chart, but we'll get into that later. So I want to merge these cells over here and center align this personal growth category. I also want to merge these cells right here. And then next, I'm just going to give this all a little border. And there we have it. So now this looks a little bit ugly, so I'm just going to adjust the looks of it real quick. So this thing is not Lexen, so I'm going to change it back to Lexen. I'm going to center line everything using this. And in here, I want to add my checkboxes, which will check off my goals once they are completed. So I'm going to come up here to insert, and then I'm going to go to checkbox, just like that. I'm going to adjust this all a little bit. I'm going to make the goal a little bit bigger. Deadline can be a bit smaller, completed. I'll call this done just so it's shorter. And I'm going to give it a little color as well. Okay, I like how that looks. So now what I can do is I can go ahead and copy this and paste it over here. I'm going to shift this all the way down here. And now I can start changing the categories. And as well, while I'm at it, I can change the color. So I'm just going to make this uh, light blue. And then once again, I can do it. I'm going to change this one to career just like this. I'm going to change the color once again to green. So next I want finance, relationships and experiences. So actually what I can do is I can come here, copy this whole thing and paste it right here. So this one will be financial. This one will be relationships. This one will be experiences. Now I can delete this and I can change the colors once again. So actually I'm going to give this green and career. I'm going to give this one a little orange color. Relationships, I'll give it a little red color. And experiences, I will make that purple. And I'm going to make row 14 bigger because that's where my chart will be later. Okay, now we're starting to get somewhere. So right now we practically have our layout of what we want our tracker to look like. Right now it looks a bit ugly, so we'll change that all up later so we don't need to worry about it too much right now. For starters, we can come to view, click on show, and click on grid lines. And then now it's a lot cleaner. So first thing I want to do is I want to change the headers and make them a bit bigger. So to select multiple cells like this, you can hold the control button on your keyboard and click the cells and they will select all at one go. Control, control, there we go. So I'm going to bold these headers and I'm going to make them bigger, a lot bigger. So it's very clear of what the resolution is for that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to fill out the resolutions and filling it out helps you get a better look and feel of how your template or tracker will look like. So it's a very good thing to do. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so I've gone ahead and pasted some example goals. So notice how the formatting is cut off and everything. So 
now we can go ahead and fix that. So first thing we need to do is make sure all the headers are bold. So I'm just going to go through each one and bold them just like this. Next, I want to space out the goal column and make the empty columns a bit smaller, just like this. So I'm going to select C, H and M and do it like this. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the deadlines to be all just showing the date because I don't want the year because I already know it's 2025 and that will also save me some space. So I'm going to select all of them. I'm going to go to format and I'm going to select a custom date and time format. So I don't want the year. I don't want the comma. I just want the month in as an abbreviation and the day. Click apply and that looks a lot better. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this smaller so that we have more space. And for the goals here, I'm going to select them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the font just a little bit smaller. This way we can have the text show up completely. And I'm going to make column C, H and M slightly bigger since we have more space now. And there you go. That looks a lot better right now. So I also want the done to be the same size. So to make them the same size, just select the columns and adjust them and they will be the same size for you. Okay, now let's get into the charts. So what I'm thinking is I want to have something that tells me how many goals I've completed for a certain category. So first I want to know how many goals are completed. So to do that, what we can do is we can use the count if function. And what we'll do is we'll count if this range, if any of the cells are true, because when something is checked, that is considered true, as you can see up here. And when something is unchecked, it'll be false. So whenever you check it, the number will go up just like this. So I want to show the number of completed out of the number of total goals. So it'll be out of five. So now I'm going to center align this. I'm also going to vertically align it and I'm going to make it slightly bigger. So now whenever I check off a goal, I can see how many are done. So next I want to add a pie chart or a donut chart. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to select the chart type to be a donut. And now it says column two must be numeric. So I'm just having this error because I haven't actually selected my data range. So actually what I need to do is just, I just need a simple, how many have I completed function over here. So I'm going to use count if I'm going to select this range and I'll do if it's true. So right now zero is selected. And then what I want over here is I want the number of goals which are not completed. So that will be five minus this number over here. So now when I click it, it will automatically update just like that. So why do I need those two numbers? Well, it's for my chart. So I'm going to come back to my chart. I'm going to double click it and I'm going to change my data range to select these two cells and press OK. And then what we need to do is since we have this as numbers in this formation, we need to switch the rows of columns and then now we can see the breakdown. So right now we have three completed. So I'm going to change the bigger side to be green and leave this side to be red. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the chart style and remove the background color. This way now it's see through and I can put the chart over the three over five. So it'll look kind of better. I'm going to remove the chart border color over here. And then I'm going to come here and make it smaller so that it fits properly just like that. And then last but not least, I'm going to remove this wording over here by clicking on them, going back and setting the legend to be none. So now we have our little chart there. Now it's a little bit small. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select five and 14 and make them bigger so they fit on my sheet. And then I just need to adjust the pie chart a little bit. And there we have it. And then what you can do with these numbers up here later on is that we can simply change the text color to be the same color as the background, which is white. And then you won't see it anymore. But I'm going to press control Z because I want that right now. So now we just need to copy this formula and chart to all the other five. So it's very simple to do. Simply highlight this cell, press control C, and then press control V on all the other cells. And if you double click the formula, you can see that the range has been automatically changed to be over here. So that is very efficient and time saving. Then we also need to copy these two cells up here. We're just going to copy, paste it up here, paste it up here, paste it over here, paste it over here, paste it over here. Now that we have it pasted everywhere, when it updates, we can see that it updates properly. 
Unfortunately for the chart here, if you press control C and control V, it will still bind to the first chart. So what you have to do is just double click on your chart, go to setup and then select the data range, remove this and then select your new data range up here and press OK. Now the chart will be for the correct category. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for the rest of the categories and I'll come back to you guys after it's done. So this is what the final product looks like. All I'm going to do now is change these cells to be white color. And then I'm just going to improve the look of this. And actually, I'm going to take it and I'm going to center it over here. And there you go. That is how you create a template in Google Sheets. Now, there's so many more things that you can add to this template, but I want it to be a very simple one for you guys to start out with and learn. And if you want this template, I'll go ahead and upload this and it'll be in the description below. All I ask is that you give it a five star rating if you found it useful and helpful in any way. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll see you guys in the next one.